For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves in London, England. Well, more specifically, we're in the neighborhoods of East Dulwich and Honor Oak. Today, we're gonna to be telling the story of Boris Karloff. Would you like one of my flowers? I can make a boat. See how mine floats? Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. Our first trip to London, our first trip to England, actually, our first trip overseas, and we choose to do our first video on the life of Boris Karloff. Now, for this video, we're gonna be visiting three different locations. The first one being where Boris was born, which is in a building right down the street from where we are right now. The other one is gonna be where he died, where he lived and died which is on the other side of town. And then we're also going to visit where Boris's final resting place is. Now, Boris Karloff was cremated, so you can't go visit a headstone. But his ashes were scattered in a garden, and there's a little plaque that you can go and pay your respects. That's what we're doing today. Just walking around London. Now, before we go any further, we need to stop this video right here and mention something. Now, the world knows Boris Karloff as Boris Karloff because that's his stage name. But throughout this video, we're going to be showing you some plaques on buildings and talking about a man by the name of William Henry Pratt. That was Boris Karloff's real name. So keep that in mind as we travel around London and walk history the only way the Grim Life Collective knows how. Right now we're walking up a street known as Peckham Rye. And the building Boris Karloff was born in is the fifth one up. So there's one, two, three, four, five. It's got a small blue plaque right on the side of the building. So we're gonna walk up a little bit more then we're gonna cross over. I just wanna kinda get up here so we can zoom in, and take a look at the plaque. Fifth building up on the road is this one right here. This is Boris Karloff's place of birth. You can see it says Seamaster and on the other side it says Day Lewis Pharmacy, but right above where it says Seamaster, there's a blue plaque, circular blue plaque. And that's what we're here looking for. The sign is actually really hard to read from across the street because the print is so small. But zooming in, it says English Heritage, William Henry Pratt, alias Boris Karloff, the dates 1887 to 1969, which is the year that he died. And it says actor was born here. Really cool, right? Boris Karloff, that's a Slavic name, but you're uh, not Russian, are you? Uh, no, not Boris? really. Uh, you were born in? I was born in Dulwich. First went on the stage, 1910, actually, up in Western Canada. Uh, why did you change your name, Boris? Well, it was a family name on my mother's side, and uh, I thought my own name of Pratt, if I ever got uh, known in the theatre, might be unfortunate. What was your real name? <laughs> Pratt. George... Uh, William Henry William Pratt. Henry Pratt. All right, baby girl. With Boris Karloff's birthplace behind you, his two most iconic monster roles, Frankenstein's monster and the mummy. Do you have a preference? Do you have a favorite Karloff monster? You know, I'll be honest. I was mostly raised on Frankenstein. He was uh, probably the most popular monster aside from Dracula. And even then, I think Frankenstein beat out Dracula. I, I've been having a, a bigger appreciation for the mummy lately. Like, I don't know. I, I, is this my mummy era? Have I moved away from Frankenstein? I don't know, but I'm appreciating it a lot more lately. Let me set this up, because I'm going to give you a little Grim Life Collective leg shot. I have a 
Boris Karloff's Frankenstein's Monsters tattoo on my leg. So big Frankenstein fan, big Frankenstein fan. Now here's the fun thing about this. If you come here to visit this spot, make sure you come whenever the Seamaster is open because in the inside they have some things that are gonna make every Boris Karloff fan drool. We're gonna take you guys inside in just a moment. But before we do that, I wanna point out something. There's a picture on the inside of Christopher Lee standing up above the word C, right next to the plaque. Just, just take this in. Like, this is history, this is horror history. All right, let's head inside and take a look at this place. Boris Karloff's place of birth. So there's Jessica sitting. I gave your, your identity away. <laughs> oh, don't be mad about it. Don't be mad about it. So what we want to show you guys is right over here. Remember that picture I was just telling you about Christopher Lee standing up there by the plaque? Here's the shots of that. Pretty cool, right? Oh man, I love it, I love it. And there's one down here, close up. Man, he always looks so serious. Always. Get a little bit in focus. Here you go. The photo I was just talking about where he was standing up there right next to the blue plaque. Wild, right? And it's not just this. There's one other thing here and it's in the dining room. Right through here is the dining room. It's not a very big dining room. It's just the right size. And right over here on the wall is a picture signed by Sarah Karloff. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the plaque was put here on Karloff's birthplace in 1998. Pretty sure it was. Man, this is cool. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Now, if you're a fan of horror, obviously, this is the best place to get some fish and chips, especially if you're a fan of Boris Karloff. Now, from here, we got some more Boris Karloff history to track down. So let's go do that now. Yeah, baby girl, I think we have officially found our forever home. Look at that place. Wow. I mean, come on, think about it. Right now, we are on our way to visit the final resting place of Boris Karloff. We come across the cemetery on the side of the road with this giant mansion over here. With, I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond gorgeous. There's like this echo effect going on. And then if I turn the camera around this way, I mean, I'm not making this up. There is this massive church. I can't even get it all in. Look at this. Oh. We love it here. Typically don't do things like this, but gotta look over the wall. Oh my freaking word. This would make a great Grim Life Collective headquarters. Oh, I'm shaking. I am literally shaking. Hey, look at this house. I can't. Jessica's a little sad because <laughs> the wall is just tall enough and you can't see over it. Maybe you could do like some jumping. There you go. Or, like, you could take your head off like the fireies from Labyrinth throw them up over the wall. Oh. Beyond gorgeous, beyond gorgeous. Let's see if the church door opens. Would really love to see inside this church. Is it open? Oh my word.
oh my. Oh my word. Baby, we need to buy this house next door. Didn't expect the bells to go off, the little dings. Oh, I'm trying really hard not to shake because I'm holding the camera. Did, definitely did not expect to find something like this on our journey today. One more shot of this church. Baby girl, you have to come over here. I know you don't like the shots of the camera down below looking up, but there's just something extra spooky about this. Someday this will be our home, our forever home. I'm very small. You are very single. small. <laughs> it's massive. When James Whale was the director of Frankenstein, and uh, he saw me in the makeup, well, rather in the lunchroom, and um, I had my best makeup on, a straight makeup, and what I thought was my best suit. I was playing a different kind of part. And he invited me to his table to have a cup of coffee and said he would like to make a test of me for the monster. And I thought, well, that doesn't speak very well of my nice straight makeup and my good suit. However, I was delighted. I think it's pretty safe to say that at this point, everybody pretty much knows the work of Boris Karloff. If you don't know all the details, at least you know some of the faces that he was, like Frankenstein's monster. But when it comes to his death, he died February 2nd, 1969. He was 81 years old. And pretty much his entire life he was a heavy smoker. And eventually he contracted uh, emphysema, which led to bronchitis, which led to pneumonia, which killed him at the age of 81. Now at the time of his death, he requested that he had a very modest funeral and they honored his wishes. And he was cremated here at Guildford Crematorium and his ashes rest beneath a rose bush. And there are so many rose bushes here, but his ashes rest underneath a rose bush and a little plaque that says Boris Karloff. That's what we're looking for. So here's one of the many rose gardens that are here. And we have no idea which one he's under, which rose bush. It says plot number two, but there's also a note on findagrave.com that says that there's been so many different renovations happening that nobody knows if he's still in that same spot. So that is what we're trying to decipher right now. And basically it's walking around to each rose bush and just taking a look at the plaques. And surprisingly, there's nobody here today to ask. So it's just us. We should also point out that this is our first cemetery safari in England. And who better than Boris Karloff? Now, his plaque, Boris Karloff's final resting place of his ashes is right over here, near the building actually. Oh, wow. All right, here, let's get down to it. It's a little hard to read. There we go. In loving memory of Boris Karloff, died 2nd February, 1969. And we got crows. I'm gonna say they're ravens cawing off in the distance. I think it's quite, quite fitting. We should really point this out, that if you do come here looking for Boris Karloff in row number two, in Rose Garden number two, it still has the marker, the original marker, but with all the different renovations, the Rose Garden is now number 14. I'm guessing there's that many people here that they had to build 14 or more Rose Gardens. I don't know how many there are. Pretty wild, right? 
It's a beautiful little spot. I mean, you can just imagine what this place looks like once all the rose, you know, the roses are in bloom. I'm trying to clean up the plaque a little bit. What are you using to clean that with? Is it a rose thorn? There you go, it's looking pretty good. Make it a little easier for anybody else who comes in after us to try to find them. And there's Jessica's hard work. It looks good, you can read it now. In loving memory of Boris Karloff. So let me put this into perspective for you. Let me give you an idea of what we're dealing with, what we're walking into. At the very end of this street, the very bottom of this hill in the ravine is a cottage that Boris Karloff lived till the time he died. He didn't die here, he died in a, in a hospital. But it's a beautiful cottage with a garden. A garden that we've heard is in the shape of a coffin. The closest town to where we are standing right now is a town known as Liphook. And this village where Boris Karloff had a cottage in up until the time he died is a village known as Bramshot. Now here's the thing. Bramshot, the entire village, is supposed to be haunted. Now this leads me to say this, to go out on a severed limb and say this. Being in England is like walking through your favorite horror movie. It's amazing. So down the street we go into this haunted village and the final home of Boris Karloff. So what's the story with this little cottage? Well, 1965, Boris Karloff eventually left California and he came back here to England and he bought this little cottage and he didn't die here. Like I said, he died from pneumonia. He was actually in the hospital, he was hospitalized. But behind this wall that you can see to the cottage is a garden. And he was an avid gardener. He loved gardening. Uh, I think we did a video a couple years ago on Boris Karloff's haunted rose garden in California. This was the last garden that Karloff tended to. And uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It's crazy to think that the horror icon Boris Karloff would walk in and out this door, live here in this quaint little cottage in the middle of the woods, really. I mean, some time has come, there's new houses over here. But just think him standing on the other side of this wall tending to his rose gardens. It blows my mind. Well, I will say this. It's a beautiful spot, that's for sure. Looks like they got some renovations going on. There's some scaffolding and ladders back there. But it's right in the middle of this intersection. If somebody was home, trust me, I would ask them. I want to get inside the garden. The homeowner, her name is Penny. She is absolutely amazing. And she came home while I was outside and she, she was like, you're a fan of Boris Karloff. Would you like to see the garden? So Boris Karloff would tend his garden in here. This was it. Roses. <sighs> now, does this look like anything special to you? Like the top of a coffin? Imagine just a, a giant laying down. Oh, man. This is breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. Definitely, never in a million years did I ever think that this would be a possibility, but yet here I am. And this is just one part of it. This is the top of the coffin. It's just beyond amazing. Now the inside has changed so much and we promised Penny that we wouldn't show the inside. But we don't have to, this is what we came here for. Standing inside the garden, this is Karloff's last home, his cottage here in England before he passed. I, I can feel it. I can feel it. 
Now, a lot of people don't know this, but directly across the street from the cottage, Boris Karloff also owned this garage. This was Karloff's property as well. And there's actually a secret garden here. Now you gotta remember, Karloff loved his gardens. And there's a hole in the hedge. Look at this. And Jessica's back there talking to Penny. Amazing conversations, amazing stories. And she said that for the most part, the building really hasn't changed since Karloff was here. I mean, they've done a few different things. You gotta upgrade. Amazing. There's even a pathway that goes back further into the woods to a little stream and it is peaceful. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm, I'm walking here. As we left, Penny was telling us about a church at the top of the hill. It's this church right here. And not sure if it's open, if we can get inside, but if we can, Sarah Karloff has a plaque on the wall. It seems she donated bells to the church. You know, I'm pointing the camera directly at the sun. Lift this up a little bit so you can see the... That's kind of spooky at the same time, right? Wow. This is gorgeous. Two beautiful churches, two beautiful graveyards in one day. This is the kind of stuff that makes me want to move to England. Breathtaking, right? Is the door open? Now this one's locked so we can't get inside to see the plaque. But that's okay. This is something else, right? Like, wow. I mean, seriously, look at this place. enough to take your breath away, isn't it? You know what? If I were you guys, if you're watching this channel, don't be surprised if someday Jessica and I move to England. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as we enjoyed making it. I mean, visiting places like this in England and telling the story of Boris Karloff. Thank you for joining us on another grim adventure. And until next time, happy Halloween.